So we've got an integral here, square root of 1 minus x divided by x with respect to x. Now, we've got no parameters of integration, so it's just an indefinite integral. So where are we going to start with this? Well, with an x in the denominator and a square root of 1 minus x in the numerator, it's definitely looking like a u substitution. Now, the question is, which u substitution are we going to do? Are we going to do a u equals x, in which case we'll have a square root of 1 minus u? Or we could do the u substitution of 1 minus x, which we could still do something with this, but then we've got a square root of u in our numerator. So I'm going to go for u equals a square root of 1 minus x. So let's start with that. So u equals square root 1 minus x. Okay, let's take the derivative of that. So du. So that equals, take the derivative of square root. We're always going to get 1 over our square root. 1 minus x. And then we have to double it. So 1 over that. And then with the chain rule, we take the derivative of inside the square root. So the derivative of 1 minus x is just going to be minus 1. So therefore we need to put a minus sign in our numerator. And then that's dx. So now let's just get the dx on its own. So we can put that in here. So now we get our dx equals. So multiply both sides by 2 times square root of 1 minus x. So we get 2 times square root of 1 minus x. And not forgetting the minus sign, so we have to put that there, and then du. Okay, now let's try and transfer this into our u variable. So now we get the integral, square root of 1 minus x, which is u. And then we've got our x in our denominator. So we're going to have to do something about this, because we don't have an actual x here just yet. And our dx is negative 2. So I'm going to bring my negative 2 out front. And square root of 1 minus x. And du. Now that's a little bit awkward now because I wanted to get rid of this x here. So we're still a little bit awkward here. So I'm not sure we've made the right decision here. So... If we've got an x and a square root of 1 minus x, well, straight away I can see that this can be a u. So that can transfer as being a u. But what about the x? Well, let's do something with this u and see if we can get u on its, uh, see if we can get x on its own. So I've got u squared would be 1 minus x. So therefore I can get the x on its own. So I'll get x equals 1 minus u squared. Okay. So now let's go again on this, get this fully into our u variable. So u in our denominator can stay. This we know is our u. So then we got put, multiplied by u on our top. du, that's good to go. Now our x here we know is 1 minus u squared. So let's put that in our denominator. OK, right, let's just clean this up a little bit. So I've got the integral and I've got my minus 2 u squared over 1 minus u squared du. OK, now this is looking like we're going to need partial fraction decomposition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute the minus sign and switch these around so it's going to be easier to do that. So if I multiply everything in here by minus 1, I can just flip these round, and then I'll end up with 2 times u squared over u squared minus 1 du. OK, now getting ready for partial fractions, let's factor out this denominator. So now I've got 2 over u squared, then I'll have u minus 1 and u plus 1. DU. OK. Now, got a U squared in the top. Now, that's going to be a little bit awkward for partial fractions. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something with the top that's not going to change the value, but it's going to give me something I can do with partial fractions. So I'm going to add one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract one. OK, now if I take one step back and just remember this factorization, I can now plug in my u squared minus one in my denominator. And then good things will probably happen because I've got u squared minus one in my numerator as well. So I'll go back to putting that one in. Now I can see I can split this fraction. So u squared minus one and a u squared minus one. Then what's left is a one over u squared minus one. So let's rewrite that. Let's go here. So I've got u squared minus one over u squared minus one. And I just got my plus one. So plus one over u squared minus one, du. So now I can see that this will cancel out and just become a one. And that's gonna be a nice integral for us to do. And not forgetting to bring over this constant. Okay, so now let's just tidy that up. So now I've got an integral uh, doubled with one plus one over u squared minus one du. And then going back to the factorization of this that we did earlier, I'm now left with integral doubled one plus one over u minus one u plus one du. Okay, well, the next task we need to do is to partial fraction decomposition of this part of the integrand here. So let's move on to that next. OK, let's just take this part of the integrand here on its own and let's just do partial fractions of that. So let's just concentrate on this bit for now. So 1 over u minus 1, u plus 1. So to set up our building blocks for our decomposition, we've got some variable a over u minus 1 plus another variable b over u plus 1. Now these will end up being constants that will be equal to this. OK, now next thing to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by this denominator. So this whole thing multiply by u plus 1 u minus 1. So put that around the whole part of the equation here. So if I multiply this by this, I'm just going to left with 1. So that's just going to be that. And then multiplying this with this part of my decomposition, all I'm going to left with is the u minus 1s are going to cancel out, and I'm going to left with a times u plus 1. And then similar with this one, if I multiply this one with these, the u plus ones are going to cancel out and my u minus one will be in my numerator with the b. So that takes care of that. OK, now let's just expand this out a little bit and let's find corresponding coefficients. So one equals a times u plus a plus b times u minus b. OK, let's get the constants together and let's get the u coefficients together. So 1 equals, so let's put my u. So I've got an a and a b and it's plus, so a plus b. And my constants are positive a and negative b. So plus a minus b. OK. Now, corresponding coefficients here, my a minus b will be the same as my constant because this is the same as my constants. And this one here will be the same as the coefficient of u. So with my u, basically what I've got here, I've got 0 times u plus 1. So basically a plus b will be 0. So let's write that down. So let's go here. a plus b equals 0. And a minus b 
will be equivalent to 1. Okay, well now just simultaneous equations now, we just isolate either an A or a B. Well as I've got positive A's, I'll just subtract. So now A plus B equals 0 minus A minus B equals 1. So A minus A cancels out, so that becomes a 0. Positive B minus minus B, so that becomes 2B. And then 0 minus 1 becomes minus 1. So now just solve for b, and we can see here that b equals minus one half. And then let's just plug that into maybe this top one. So now I've got a plus my b, which is minus one half, equals zero. So now I can see that a must equal positive one half. Okay, now let's take the partial uh, composition off the board. And then we'll just rewrite the integral, replacing this with my decomposition. Okay. Okay. So now I've plugged in my partial fraction decomposition for this. So I've now got this is now still the same value in my integrand. So now let's just deal with this constant here and distribute it through because then we can cancel out these twos. So let's just go with that. So now I'll have two plus multiply this I'm just going to left with 1 over u minus 1 and same here I now subtract 1 over u plus 1 du okay well now I think I'm ready to integrate now so let's integrate with respect to u so now this will just become 2u plus now integral of 1 over u minus 1 that's just going to be log of u minus 1. Chain rule will just give me a 1, so that just stays as natural log. So natural log of u minus 1. Now, just to try and extend the domain of this integrand here, um, I'm going to just put these as absolute values. So that takes care of that. And then here, I've got the same similar kind of integral uh, result here. I'm going to have log of u plus 1, and I'm going to just expand here my domain with the absolute values. So now I'm going to subtract log absolute value u plus 1. Okay, now I'm not quite ready for the plus c just yet, because I need to now backtrack now back into x. So u is the square root of 1 minus x. So let's substitute that in. So now I've got 2 times the square root of 1 minus x. Let's plug this one in here. Plus the natural log, absolute value, square root of 1 minus x minus 1. And let's do the same for this one. Minus natural log, absolute value, of u is my square root of 1 minus x plus 1. Okay, and then plus c. So it's quite a big result there for our integral. Now, a couple of things we need to just make clear as well with our answer. There's a few values of x which this cannot be used, in, there's no domain for it. So we cannot have x equals 0. So x does not equal 0. So if you plugged in a 0 here, we'd have some problems. Like here, we'd have log of minus 1. So we're moving to complex numbers. And here, with the square root of 1 minus x, same again. We don't want a negative in our square root. So therefore, x cannot be larger than 1. So x is not larger than 1. Okay, so that's our conditions for our inter uh, result of our integral. Okay, 